Hello engineers, welcome back. Our next video on this VGD basics is a fuel injection valve. You have to understand this fuel injection valve because I consider this fuel injection is the heart of heart of the engine. So this is a FLV. This is a FLV flow limit valve. Flow limit valve and this flow limit valve. It will, it's the flow limit wall gets 1000 bar fuel oil as I mentioned earlier is a rail unit fuel oil rail unit fuel oil right at 1000 bar so the fuel fuel from the rail units enters the FLV the FLV is just you consider as a cylinder and a piston this piston has one orifice on the and the both the piston has orifice so once the fuel once the thousand bar fuel enters the piston the piston moves right so because of this orifice because of the piston has orifice the the fuel oil will pass through this orifice and enters the other side of the piston and it goes to the fuel injection valve this is a fuel injection valve this is the needle needle of this fuel injection valve once the needle lifts the fuel is injected same as a man bw engine sir the fuel will come with the fuel will comes to the needle on the bottom and upper part of the needle because of this pressure because of this pressure design because of this pressure design of the needle the needle the needle will be closed when the fuel when the fuel pressure acts on the top and bottom of the needle when the fuel pressure acts on top and bottom of this needle the fuel will be closed engineers you have to understand this design this design of this VGD because I consider this design is uh, this design is super and out of box thinking when compared to man made W engines. So you just consider you just understand this engineers you just understand this when the pressure when the pressure when the fuel oil comes to the needle it will come to it will come to the bottom and top part of the needle and because of this pressure design needle will be closed the top part has one orifice it will enter with the, with the orifice. When you drain the top part of the fuel with the one solenoid valve, the needle lifts and the fuel is and the uh, and the fuel is injected. When you drain this, it will go out fuel out fuel out. This solenoid valve will get P W M signal. The P W M signal is pulse with modulation signal. It is a high power signal. I will engineers. I will explain this. In the in one separate video of WinGD controls, what is what is PWM signal and why it is required for this fuel injection valve? What are the high power and low power signals? Engineers, you must understand this. When the fuel when the fuel from the fuel rail goes to the fuel injection valve, the fuel injection valve is basically a cylinder with one piston. The piston has orifice. Through the orifice, through, through this orifice, the the fuel will go to other side of the piston and from here it goes to the needle wall on the top and bottom part of the needle because of this pressure design the needle will be closed the fuel is not injected once the top part of this needle is drained out with help of the solenoid wall the needle lifts and the fuel injector when the fuel is injected when the fuel injector the FLV moves right so after this after this fuel is injected when the solenoid wall gets the close command from the engine control the solenoid wall will be closed the the well, the solenoid will be closed and this upper part will be again pressurized the needle will be closed because of this back pressure this the because of this back pressure from here the flow limit valve moves moves left so engineers to summarize this one when the needle is when the when the needle valve lifts and close the fuel the FLV will will move right and left when the needle lifts and closes the FLV will move right and when when the, the FLV will move right and left, right and left. Because of this back pressure, because of the back pressure from the from because of the back pressure in the line. So engineers, the main function of the FLV is to limit the fuel oil which is entering in the fuel 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 valve when there is any damage to this fuel valves. So for example, if the fuel, if, if, if there is any damage to the solenoid wall or the injection wall is stuck open, that time, that, that time, that fuel should not be keep on injecting only. 
to limit the fuel in fuel oil injection the flow limit valve will will moves right and shuts the fuel when there is too much fuel when the too much fuel is injected in the cylinder by this way with help of fuel flv we are limiting the fuel quantity which was which was injected in the cylinder oil in, in the cylinder engineers once again i will explain because you have to understand this because this is the heart of the engine when the these are fuel flv which has one cylinder on piston it gets the it will get 1000 bar fuel oil pressure so because because of this orifice in the piston the fuel oil passes through the orifice and it goes to the needle at the same time it, it will go to the top of the needle with help of one orifice when the when this when the top part of when the top part of the needle is drained with help of the solenoid valve this needle lifts and fuel is injected when the fuel is injected the flv will moves right it will limit the fuel oil fuel oil which is which was injected once the needle when the, once the needle closes the fuel the flv the flv piston moves left so by this way the flv is moves left and right when the fuel is injected so next i will i will ex, next i will explain this in the diagram so that you understand better engineers the diagram which i shown contains three fuel injection valve and one fuel limiting valve the first slide i will show the working of one fuel injection valve and in the next slide i will show the working of all three fuel injection valve in the first slide when one fuel injection valve works you have to observe the fuel limiting valve travel portion this fuel limiting valve travel portion travels to the mid 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 portion when only one fuel injector valve works in the next slide when the three fuel injector valve works the fuel injector the fuel limiting valve will travels to the end end position when the three fuel injector valve when the three fuel injection valve works by this way you can you you can you can understand that fuel the the purpose of fuel limiting valve is to limit the amount of fuel which was injected into the cylinder when all three fuel injector or works and to stop the fuel limiting to stop the fuel when any one injector was stuck open so engineers this is the explored view of fuel injection valve of Vingidi engine the upper part is called the solenoid valve and the spring sets which cannot be overhauled this has to be landed to the workshop of authorized Vingidi and the lower part is a wearable part of the injector this can be exchanged on board by crew and there is no adjustment allowed in this lower part engineers next one is I will try to explain this fuel working in the engineering diagram so that you will you will understand better so this is a needle valve this blue color line is a high pressure fuel oil pipe of 1000 bar this is a fuel valve this is a fuel oil at 1000 bar this is that inlet throttle and this is the outlet throttle so this is a needle valve so the fuel oil will goes will goes to the bottom of the needle and waits here at the same time it goes to the top of the needle with one throttle valve this is a no, this is this is this is a solenoid valve which was connected to this one this is a solenoid valve and we have one spindle and the ball arrangement so once this once the solenoid valve activates the ball the ball the ball goes upside and the fuel is drained the fuel is drained here this fuel out when the fuel drained, the needle valve lifts and the fuel injects. The needle valve fuel injector, sir. So this red color line is a lube oil line. Lube oil. The line is a lube oil. Lube oil in and this is a lube oil out. The lube oil in and out is to cool the injector and to cool this solenoid valve part. So the next one is if there is any leak between this fuel oil or this lube oil there is one more line comes here so it is fuel by lube oil leak if there is any leak between these two one there is one more there is one more hole connected to this so there is one more line which comes out of the fuel injector which is this fuel by lube oil leak if lube oil leaks it will come to here if fuel oil leaks it will come out like this so engineers when you go on board you find four small lines which is connected to the 
this connected to the fuel injector sir so one is this lube oil inlet lube oil inlet which is used to lubricate this this, this which is used to lubricate the solenoid valves control rods and the springs and second one is lube oil outlet this lube oil outlet third one is fuel by lube oil leakage if there is any leakage between this this will come out and fourth one is control fuel oil outlet this is a control fuel outlet which comes out so we have four lines one two three four we have four lines which is used which will which is connected to the fuel injectors so engineers to summarize this one this is the engine diagram of the control part this is the control part and this is a solenoid valve this is a solenoid valve solenoid valve when the solenoid valve activates this this control rod will goes up and the fuel drains here and the uh, when the when the fuel drains on the top of the needle the fuel is injected so when you go on board and see the fuel injector you will find four lines four small lines which is connected to the fuel injectors one is a lube oil inlet and one is a lube oil outlet and one is a fuel by lube oil leakage and third is a control fuel or control fuel outlet so this is a control fuel outlet control control fuel outlet which which control fuel outlet and third is a fuel and second one is a fuel by fuel by lube oil leak and third is a fuel, lube oil inlet and fourth is a lube oil outlet for better understanding i have taken my fuel injector this is wingd 6 rt flex 50 df fuel injector you can see this one is a you can see this one is a high pressure high pressure fuel oil inlet and which comes like this through this wall board which which comes here and from here it was sprayed inside the cylinder so this is the solenoid valve which i have explained earlier this is present inside this fuel injector so this is a solenoid valve connections this is that pw signal which gets pw signal this is a high power signal i will explain this part in one separate video wingd controls so you will understand better so <coughs> so we'll open this one so so the upper part is called solenoid the upper part is called solenoid valve controls with the spring sets which cannot be overall on board as i said earlier this has to be overhauled by authorized service engineer of wingd the middle part so the middle part is a control part where that where this no where this uh, where the nozzles and this inlet out the, where the nozzles and the inlet and inlet and outlet throttles were explained here in this board which was present here so this is also not serviceable on board this has to be this has to be exchanged by this has to be exchanged on board by engineers so this is available on the exchange basis from the wingi the lower part is a nozzle part this has this has this has this also to be exchanged so <coughs> this is the exchange which is available for this middle one the middle part so i'll show you how it how it looks like so the all the these these all the o-rings which is uh, which is required for this fuel injectors and uh, so you can see there is a middle middle one you can see this one is a middle part of the fuel injector this has to be exchanged by onboard engineers so they, this is also not serviceable you, you you cannot do any adjustment here unlike the man bw man bw fuel injectors where the fuel pressure can be adjusted here we we cannot do nothing we can do nothing so i'll show you how it looks so this is that part which has to be this is the part which ha this is the part which has to be connected to the fuel injector so you can see the you can see the nozzles so we have 
we have holes for lube oil in and out and uh, fuel oil and uh, one is a controlled fuel oil outlet and one is a lube oil leak lube oil by fuel oil leak the lube oil by fuel oil leak the one lube oil inlet and outlet fuel oil inlet and outlet all these all these connections are here and this is that uh, controlled part which has to be this is also the part of this is also the part of this middle part which has to be assembled when you are when you when you do oil on injectors so we'll put back this one So the bottom one is a nozzle. The bottom one is a nozzle. This is that nozzle. So this is a nozzle. This has to be changed. This has to be changed when you are overhauling the injectors. So so engineers, when you are overhauling the injectors, there is no adjustment. There is no adjustment available. so engineers when you are doing the fuel injectors basically there is no fuel or pressure adjustment which is available in the vgd fuel injectors so the when the middle part you have to be exchange and the bottom part this one uh, bottom part is solenoid bottom part this nozzle you have to be exchange so when you go on board and see the fuel fuel and see this fuel injector this is present inside the cylinder with help of one sleeve this is called the fuel injector sleeve when you want if you want to remove the fuel injector you no need to remove the sleeve you no need to remove the sleeve you can remove the fuel injector without removing the sleeve the sleeve contains a four the sleeve contains a four the sleeve contains a four connections which i have explained earlier one is a lube oil inlet lube oil outlet control fuel outlet and fuel by fuel by lube oil leak so engineers in the close up view you can see so here here is a he, this is a part where a sleeve sits sleeve sleeve sits so which was divided into 1 2 3 4 which has divided into the four parts with help of o-rings 1 2 3 4 5 five o-rings are there which was divided into four parts 1 2 3 4 so you can see the all one part has one hole this is having one hole and uh, this is having one hole this is having one hole this is having one hole so this 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 is where that uh, inlet and outlet inlet and outlet comes and goes so engineers to summarize this one so this is a fuel this is a vgd fuel injector 6rt flux df so here is a high pressure fuel oil which comes and which comes here and it waits here when the nozzle lifts the fuel is the fuel is injected so if you want to do uh, if you if you are doing a uh, uh, maintenance on this uh, fuel injectors actually there is no pressure adjustment there is no pressure adjustment available on board so this this has to be an exchange based only the middle part the middle part which are, the middle part which is available on the exchange you just change you just remove and discard this and put the new one the bottom part is a nozzle part that also you change you remove it discard it and change the new one that topmost part this solenoid the solenoid control part and the uh, solenoid control and the spring sets which cannot be which cannot be adjust, which cannot be repaired on board or adjust on board or serviced on board so this solenoid valve contains five four sessions this this uh, this fuel injector contains a four sessions 1 2 3 4 this is this sits inside the sleeve so this four session was divided in which was which was separated by the o rings lube oil inlet lube oil outlet controlled fuel oil outlet and fuel by lube oil leak so this is a solenoid valve thank you so engineers when i explained you about the fuel inject about the fuel injection system so i have told that fuel trial is maintained about the 1000 bar this is this is i told only for explanation purpose basically when you go on board and see and see the fuel and see the and the fuel and, and you see the fuel rail pressure it is only about 500 to 600 bar only it will never exit maximum 500 bar 500 to 600 bar so the when you put heavy c mode that means high when you put heavy rough weather mode rough weather mode in the vgd so the rough weather mode in the vgd is called heavy c mode when you put this heavy c heavy c mode the fuel oil pressure will go to 700 bar the fuel pressure will be very constant 
so that time only the fuel pressure will go to 700 or otherwise i have seen only the fuel pressure is maintaining around 500 bar so the rpm is controlled by that amount of the time which was injected in the uh, cylinder for example uh, the time varies from 10 5 to 50 milliseconds so for example if one injector is uh, one injector is injecting at 5 millisecond it can vary up to 50 milliseconds so by this way the the rpm of the engine is changed so when when the when the rpm of engine is very less so for uh, that time so vgd control will cut off one injector for example my engine 6 rt flux 50 df contains two fuel injectors when in the slow dead slow mode it will cut off one injector and it will it will inject in only one injector but at, at some times for example at one minute or at in every two to three minutes that uh, that that uh, rotation will be changed for uh, that to one minute that one fuel injector will run other will be cut off and another two minutes this will run and this will cut off like this way so by doing this way so vngd makes sure that no no fuel injector is no fuel injector nozzle get be choked so engineers the next topic on the fuel injection wall is the fast fast technology of vngd the fast is nothing but fuel actuated sackless technology it is same as compared to man bw engines zero sack technology so this is to reduce the emission and to improve the fuel injection performance engineers i like to share one of my bad experience with this wing 6rt flux 50df fuel systems so <clears throat> as you know in man bw engines when engine is stopped the fuel used to circulate up to the fuel injectors since this is electronically controlled fuel injectors the fuel does fuel is the fuel used to circulate only up to the fuel pump only so that the fuel the, the the high temperature fuel will never used to come to fuel injector when the engine is stopped and to add the complications to the systems so what happened so the design of the ship is that uh, most of the most most of the design of the ship is that that axillary engine outlet and the main engine outlet both are combined and it goes to the uh, recirculation tanks what happens is when the engine is stopped that uh, axillary engine back pressure is too much so on the main engine main engine outlet fuel oil line has one uh, nrv non return valves so because of this back pressure from the generators for example two generators are running so that uh, that that fuel that that uh, outlet wall used to close only so that that loop are, so the fuel is never circulated to the fuel pumps and the temperature of the rail unit and this fuel pump drops drastically so to to add this to add on another complication is that my the rail unit has the rail unit has that uh, tracing steam in the both side of the rails for example the rail pipe has a tracing steam on that uh, left and right side of the rail so my tracing steam temperature my tracing steam pressure also very less so what i did so when we are when we are picking up the anchor and we when we are entering inside the channel our engine rpm doesn't pick up because of the rail unit low temperatures so it is around around uh, 30 around 40 55 something so what i what we did is we i have increased my so i have increased my rail uh, rail tracing steam pressure and and i have drained little bit of oil on the main engine outlet line so there is one drain plug so i had opened it and i had drained it so so when compared to man bw engines there is one shortcoming here so that fuel is never used to circulate up to the fuel injectors so you have to make sure engineers when you are going to the cold countries when your main engine is an hfo and you are running two to two two to three generators and the generator because of the gen generator back pressure that that uh, that nrv the non return wall and the fuel main engine fuel oil return system return return line used to close only so when the, the vngd has another uh, another design of electrical heating when the engine is stopped when the engine is stopped the rail unit has a steam pressure the rail unit has a tracing steam which can be heated but this uh, high pressure fuel oil pipes all has the electrical heat el electrical heating strips so i found which is not enough the electrical the electrical strips is not uh, heating enough which is not enough for the main engine so to keep it the temperature around 50 or 60 degree so i strongly recommend when you are going to cold countries make sure that your rail temperature never never goes less than at least 50, 60 degrees celsius or 55 degrees celsius so that your engine 
response quickly when you are giving when you are increasing or decreasing rpm because this is very critical in when you are doing maneuvering or entering any channels so engineers i hope i have given you the maximum information as much as possible and which i know so which i have studied in manual and which i have known by my experience so if you found anything wrong about my understanding you can comment below and if you found it is good you can subscribe and share to your friends thank you engineers for watching